Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to use matrices to model conics. Um, given here is our general formula for all conics, and you basically use it as a base and derive the different components that you need from it to fit your given problem. Um, I also have my, co my coordinates listed for my first example. I'm going to show you how to do, um, or at least I'm going to show you all the formulas for um, a circle, parabola, and an ellipse because an ellipse and a hyperbola use a very similar, if not the same, um, formula. So starting with this, um, just already looking at our formula here, we have um, B, X, Y, and that's your rotation component. And um, we're not going to use that for my first three examples. And I'll show you an example that it does use. and. That'll be closer towards the end, though. So um, just we're going to just ignore this for a little bit, okay? So initially, when thinking of a circle, um, A is equal to C. And not only is A equal to C, but it's also equal to 1. So your A value and your C value equaling to 1, you're just going to pull this, fo this formula down, and it gives you an implied 1 on your A and C terms here. So you're going to just have x squared plus y squared plus dx plus e y plus f equals 0. Okay, so that is your first set. Now, um, that's what you're having to do in order to solve this particular matrix of a circle. So, and it's going to change depending on what you're looking for. So again, we're just going to focus on a circle at this current time. Um, so your first step is substitution. So I'm going to substitute my coordinates, which is 6, 1 in my first set. And I'm going to plug in my 6, which is my x, and my 1, which is my y, in all the places that it has x and y. So I have 6 squared plus 1 squared plus d times 6, six whoa, <laughs> plus e times 1 plus f equals to 0. So you're just substituting at first, and this is going to give you your 37 plus 60 plus E plus F equals 0. Okay, so now you're going to move similar to how you did when you're completing a square. You move all your constants to one side. So our constant here is 37, and that gives us a negative 37 on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all my remaining coordinates and I will show you the end result because that's just going to be faster because you're literally just substituting in every step. Okay, so I've completed all my substitution. Now your next step is um, switching it into matrix format. So I'm going to scoot this up. I'm going to have matrix form here. Okay, so now we're going to just take from all of our, our remaining, our last, <laughs> what we solved for, um, we're going to just pull down all our variables from that. So for example, from my initial, I had 6D, so I plug in a 6, and then I had 1E, so I have 1, and then I had 1F, and that gives me 1. So, oops. <laughs> So again, I'm just going to go ahead and go do this throughout all of them. Okay, so now you're also multiplying this all by D, E, and F. And if you remember, whenever we did multiplying by matrices, this makes sense if you were to turn it and multiply it. But again, I'm not going to cover that. Um, and then this is going to be equal to our answers that we had previously gotten. So that's negative 37, negative 8 at negative 17. Okay, so this is your A matrix times your X is equal to your B. Okay, so now the next step is finding the inverse. Now I did previously cover how to find the inverse, I think by hand, um, but I'm gonna show you how to do it in the calculator. So um, that is our next step. And I'm gonna just move it over here. Uh, yeah, I'll move it over here. So we're gonna split that. So your a, your, the inverse of a times your a times x is equal to your inverse of a times your b value. So this is what we're trying to solve for, and the way to do that 
is you're going to open up your matrix in the calculator. Okay, so I have my handy dandy calculator, and now you're going to start by going into your matrix. So here it's second and then inverse, which is your matrix up here. And then you're going to scoot over to edit, and then we're going to go into matrix A. And then your the matrix that we're inputting is our A value, so that was a 3 by 3. And now we're just going to insert the values. So for us, that was 6, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, and 1, 4, 1. Okay, so now you're going to hit second and quit, which is mode for me. And then you will go into your second matrix again. But this time you're going to go into names. You're going to select your given matrix because you can edit in different matrices. matrices yeah. So our matrix that we're focused on is matrix A. So I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to hit this inverse button here and then enter. And that gives me my inverse. It gives you, if you notice, a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo decimals. Um, the way to fix this, there's two different ways. Um, you can either hit this math button and then enter, enter, and it turns it into a fraction. Or the way that I do it, because it's just easier for me, um, is alpha y equals and then 3 because it undoes the um, decimals so 3 enter and either way it gives you your fractions so whichever works better for you either math enter enter or your alpha y equals 3 enter so um, again whichever works better for you but this is our inverse this is how to find the inverse in the calculator so I'm going to transcribe this over and I'll show you how to do the math Okay, so if you notice, I went ahead and transcribed everything, and it's exactly how it is in the calculator, and this is my inverse of A. So I'm going to go ahead and write under this. This is my A inverse, and then I transcribed this to over as well, because it's A times because it's A times B, and then it's equal to your X, because your inverse of A and your A cancels. So you're really just focused on this portion. So now that you're given this, um, you're, you can do the multiplication by hand, um, but I'm also going to show you how to do it in the calculator. So again, you're going into your matrix. Um, so you have, let's just go ahead and put it here. Okay, so second matrix. And then I'm going to scroll down to my B. And oops. Wait a second. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to scoot over to edit, and then I'm going to scroll down to my B. And then in this set, you're going to do the exact same thing and input the exact same thing, except this time you're going to put your answer column. So I'm going to have a 3 by 4 this time since I'm inputting my answer column. And so it's going to be 6, 1, 1, but you're negative 37. And then you have your 2, 2, 1 and your negative 8, and then you have your 1, 4, 1, and your negative 17. So that's how you set that up, and then you're going to go to second and quit. And then I'm going to enter the matrix again, and then this time I'm going to scroll down here. Uh, I'm going to scoot over and then to math. So first scoot over to math. And then you're going to hit alpha and apps. This gives you your row, um, your row reduced echelon form. Um, and so it's just like a really quick, easy way to find it. So you scoot over to math, alpha apps. Okay. And then you're going to hit second matrix again. And then this time you scroll down to your name. And this time we're using the B matrix. So I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm just going to hit enter again. And this gives me the answer. Of course, it's in our wonky fraction, uh, our wonky decimals. So we need fractions, and that's what we get. So this gives you our answer for your x. So I'm gonna again. I'm just gonna transcribe that to show you. Okay. So if you notice, I went ahead and transcribed. Your d value is your negative 67 over 7 your E and your F, they all line up, and I just pulled it from your last column that's over here. Um, so that's how I got that answer. 
And then now I also pull down what we started with for our formula because now you're going to use all these values and input them again. So your D you're going to plug in and everything you're just going to plug in, you're going to substitute all over again. Okay, so here your first step is a little bit different than what we initially had. You're going to multiply everything by 7 because you're having fractions. So if you were given whole numbers, you wouldn't have to do this step. But because you have fractions, you do. So I have here, it's going to be all multiplied by 7. So now that's going, to, I'm going to go ahead and distribute. So that gives you your answer. So after multiplying everything by 7, that knocked out all the fractions, and it did distribute and add some 7s in extra places, but again, it doesn't matter. You are just trying to <laughs> use matrices to model conics. So that would give you, if you input it into the calculator, your circle, and it would include your initial given points of 6, 1, 2, 2, and 1, 4. So I hope that part helped. And now we're going to go ahead and scoot over to do a parabola.